Hi everyone, a warm welcome to the program. I'm Rebecca McLaughlin Eastham, and this week we're looking at youth, creativity, and innovation in the Middle East and North Africa. We'll introduce you to the UAE's youth minister who became one of the youngest government ministers in the world when she took the role. The future is about jobs. Youth have a less restless quest for purpose. A little bit later on, we'll meet an Emirati who is keen to carve out a career for herself as a voiceover artist, despite the challenge of being blind. <laughs> But first, in a bid to fully harness the potential of Emirati youth, a dedicated venue has opened up in the capital, and Inspire Middle East went along to check it out. Against the UAE capital skyline of towering high-rises, the Abu Dhabi Youth Hub stands out. It's an undulating architectural space, housing a library, a music room and theatre, and ergonomic meeting rooms. And then there's the incubator, a workspace designed to support startups and businesses in their early stages. The hub's manager told Inspire Middle East that all entrepreneurs, mentors, students and employees between 15 and 35 years of age were welcome at the centre. She says many success stories have come from the venue's aim to connect people and foster innovation. Waka is in a way an app made easy for you to uh, connect together uh, all the flower shops in Abu Dhabi for you to be tap on, click away to order your own uh, kind of uh, celebrations. So the idea behind it as an owner for a startup business, she came across one of the students or I would say someone who's still in their career, a start of their career growth. And it was a simple conversation that led to an, a work opportunity where a videographer came across with the startup business and they actually worked together to market her uh, company, upcoming uh, startup. This year, the Arab Youth Survey discovered what more than 3,000 Arabs in 15 countries and territories had to say about their future. On the education front, three in four young Arabs are unhappy with the quality of education in their country, and more than half want to pursue higher education in the West. And when it comes to employment, a majority of those surveyed said it was the government's responsibility to provide jobs, health care, energy subsidies and housing to all citizens. As for where the majority of young Arabs would like to live in the Middle East and North Africa, the UAE held on to its number one ranking for the eighth year running. To find out more and just ahead of the Abu Dhabi Youth Center's official opening, I met with the UAE's Minister of Youth. She's a graduate of Oxford University and the UAE's first Rhodes Scholar. And before joining the government, she worked for one of Abu Dhabi's sovereign wealth funds. Minister, thank you for speaking to me today. It's an honor and privilege. Tell me a little bit about where we sit. So one of the projects of the Federal Youth Authority are youth hubs or youth centers around the, the seven emirates. And you are in Abu Dhabi Youth Hub, which is the first Abu Dhabi Youth Center. And it's focused on maximizing the potential and passion of young people and harnessing their talent by creating different spaces that can empower them, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're an artist. We're here in the kind of music room, which is soundproof for a violinist who can play or a pianist. You were appointed Minister of Youth in your very early 20s. Did that present you with any challenges? I think the challenge was to figure out what kind of disruption we could do to the youth sector that's already been in place for ages. What can we do for young people? One, we have the youth bulge. More than 60% of the population around the MENA region are under the age of 35. In the UAE, it's 50%. And the question is, it, I think the main challenge is 50, roughly 50 years of our, um, of our country was built by our natural resource and oil. And now the next 50 years are going to be built by our natural resource, which is our human capital our Emirati youth. Regarding the latest findings of the Arab Youth Survey, were there any stats that stood out to you? Any surprises? It didn't surprise me as much because I under I can sense from, from the findings that young people want to hear more from their government. And having a, a minister of youth or, or a team of young people leading the youth sector is crucial to understand radical empathy and be in the shoes of, of youth and understand their needs, their challenges. Because at the end of the day, your job or 
in, in a ministry of youth or an office focused on youth is to translate their challenges, their needs into meaningful opportunities, policies that can empower them and, and make sure they're authors of their nation's future. More than 82% of respondents said that they expect the government to provide them with some type of employment and also housing, potentially pay off debts. Are these realistic expectations in today's economic climate? I think when you look at expectations, it's very important, or when you look at the future, the future is about jobs. Youth have a less restless quest for purpose. I think the expectation from, from our perspective in the UAE is to make sure that us, government officials provide young people a seamless, holistic transition in their experience. So when we talk about education, are we as young people getting the skills we need to enter the labor market? Or is there a gap? If there is a gap, then we need to work together to fix it. A cause of concern amongst Arabs in the wider region is education, with 78% of them saying that they're actually worried about the quality of domestic education. A lot of Emiratis do choose to study abroad. Do you therefore feel that there is a brain drain? Do you need to do more to retain them here? It's great that we have Emiratis who study abroad and fantastic that we have Emiratis studying in our national universities. We have wonderful universities here. And I think what's very nice is that we have great scholarship for the exceptional students to go to Ivy League schools. This is something that I think we're very proud of and we want more of. We want to see more Fulbright scholars, Rhodes scholars, uh, Schweizerman uh, scholars who are Emiratis. If we were to compare the situation with the UAE's youth to the wider Levant region, are the challenges the same, especially when it comes to fostering and nurturing talent, boosting confidence and empowering the youth? I think one of the main challenges or differences, if I may say, is that maybe in that area of the world, they don't see it uh, in the same way that the UAE sees youth. The UAE sees young people as assets, as potential. When you look at uh, sometimes around different areas, hopelessness results when youth are not employed or uh, apathy results when they're not seen as assets. The UAE sees them as assets, as resources. And what do you, what do normal investors do with assets that have a high return on, on, on equity or, or investment? It's you invest in them. A challenge of recent times has been encouraging Emirati youth to seek jobs in the private sector and not just the public sector. Has anything been done to achieve that more successfully? So what's very interesting is there's so many different ministries and authorities working on the idea of encouraging Emiratis in the private sector. Some are going to go into entrepreneurship, of course. From our part, and in the Federal Youth Authority, we just launched the Launchpad, which is a new initiative by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. And the idea of it is any youth, just like rockets need a place to launch, we're creating Launchpad spot, uh, spots around the nation in Dubai Mall, uh, City Walk, Yas Mall, where any young person can go on the website launchpad.youth.gov.a and can, can sign up and he gets a free space for six months to open his business. So you are removing the cost of rent from young people. Two, you're helping them focus on what their product is and which market and they are in direct contact with their customers. So they get to see if their product is meaningful or can be uh, successful. Until we meet again, Minister, thank you very much for talking to me. It was such a pleasure and honor to meet you. Staying in the UAE, here's an inspiring story of a young Emirati woman with a passion for animation, in particular doing the voiceovers for characters. But as Salim Essaid reports, the professional path and the journey that lies ahead of her is anything but clear. Lima and Dihuna. Waiting for her cue. Emirati amateur voiceover artist Amal Al Mansouri faces a challenge most artists do not. She's blind and cannot see the scripts she voices or the animated characters she brings to life. Instead, she memorizes sounds. At first, I found the matter difficult, but then, when I would repeat the role and I wouldn't think about it, I would say, okay, after this musical piece, the character will talk. In this way, when you hear a here is where you start to speak. Living in Al-Wafra, a region in western Abu Dhabi, Amel was diagnosed with glaucoma at five years old. And at 13, she was completely blind, and teachers couldn't accommodate her needs. At home, Amel found new mentors in the form of Japanese animated programs. She also made friends with other fans of anime and manga in the region. We got to know her only through the virtual world. We've never met her before, but it feels like we've known her for a long time. Over the phone, Amel and her friends have fun dubbing Arabic scripts to their favorite cartoons. 
and recreating the musical scores. I joined the call to find out how. Amel's friends have long played a large role in her life. They verbally taught her maths and sciences, but more importantly, they taught her to believe in herself. When I first started, I thought that everything was difficult. But there was always something inside me that said, your dream will come true. If you love your dream, whatever the difficulties are, you'll find people on your way who will help you. Amel, now 31, has produced more than 10 voiceover films online with her friends. Amel is determined to realize her dream of one day becoming a professional voiceover artist. She's also keen to pass on her courage and confidence to the next generation to help them discover their own dreams, even if they can't see it yet for themselves. By sharing her story, Amel hopes it will inspire others. Like 14-year-old Saeed, a cartoonist who was at first hesitant to share his character sketches. Everyone has a talent and they should reach it. I'm sure that Saeed, with his drawings, he's shy to show it in front of the world. I'm sure that he's creative. With his drawings, he will make it. Amel is hoping to secure a voiceover role on Iftah Simsim, the Arabic version of the TV series Sesame Street, a program where she could potentially share her life lessons and belief that talent and passion, when given a helping hand, means the sky is the limit. That is a wrap of our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it and do make sure to catch all of our episodes online at euronews.com. Before I say goodbye, here are some Instagram posts of yours that inspired the team this week. Volunteer Asthma showed people building upon their experience with Lego at workshops by Sharjah Youth Center. And Shaker attended a three-day workshop at the Youth Hub in Dubai, held by an Emirati youth organization.